Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, we're doing another chit chat, get ready with me, trauma edition. Uh, I've had a strange amount of energy to do these videos lately because I've been sick and I've pretty much just been at home, which has given me the ability to speak to the camera because usually I cannot. So today we are doing a chit chat, get ready with me, trauma uh, bonding session between you and I using only drugstore product, which this is the first time I've ever only used drugstore product in a look in years. And I think probably ever in a video. I don't know. I, I love expensive makeup. I'm a makeup artist. I get a discount on expensive makeup. So for me, it's a little bit more, sometimes it's the same cost to buy expensive makeup. But I went to Target and I got some things that I actually really love and that are actually totally comparable to things that I use and pay much more for. So if you wanna see how we get this look and hear some trauma, then just keep watching. We're gonna be talking about my first day in the program um, how I was very quickly assimilated into the rest of the group, how uh, we dive into the rule book a little bit just because it kind of comes up in conversation, and uh, a couple other story times about me just first getting there and like the emotions I was feeling and the fear and the people who checked me in and um, my big sister in the program. So yeah, it's another to check it really with me, fully loaded. And yeah, if you like this look, then that's also just a bonus. And it's also obviously a bonus that we use all drugstore product, except for the Sephora foundation, because this is, Sephora is not a drugstore, but this is only $20. Uh, this is probably the most expensive thing in the whole video. So if you wanna see how we get this look and talk some trash, create a trauma bond with me and just keep watching. Oh my God, listen to the kombucha. There's been a buzzing in my room. It's the kombucha. It was driving me crazy. Oh my God, okay. I'm still sick. So this is a record, my second get ready with me of the week. This is awesome. So I scrounged out what I had and then I went to Target because I had a gift card and I bought some things. So today is gonna be like another story time get ready with me. You guys love the program talk and honestly, so do I. So that's probably what we're gonna do. I don't know the direction it's gonna take but we'll figure it out as we go. Cheers. Before you say it, I know that wine is not healthy while you're sick, but I opened an $80 bottle of wine five or six days ago, and so it has to be drinking. And by the way, I didn't pay $80 for it, but we went to a winery and they were selling like package deals where we got 12 bottles of nice, nice wine. This is the Milani Conceal and Perfect Concealer um, for a very discounted rate. So I split it with my sisters and now I have all this really expensive wine. So half of this stuff I've never used before, but I did some research and I bought the products that TikTokers said to buy and said that are vetted and everything, besides the stuff that I just had, or um, some of the ColourPop stuff was gifted. But I do like ColourPop. I've been using them, shouting them out, and then they sent me a little package last month. So that was very nice of them. So I'm just gonna put this concealer as my eye base and probably again not going to be teaching as much as I'm just going to be having a first impression 
So ColourPop did send me this. I've swatched this, but I've never put it on my face. So let's hope for the best. I'm only gonna use probably those three shades in the middle because I wanna be like neutral today. I'm gonna start with that shade there. So I wanna tell you guys about my first day in the program. So I, as I mentioned, we drove overnight to get there and then in the morning I was brought to the campus, like we arrived and I don't really know what happened in between. I eventually fell asleep in the car and then I woke up and then we were there. And this woman who still works there, her name's Rebecca, she's, um, she looks like she's from Alabama. She's a super voluptuous, curvy lady with long, long, long black curly hair. And she has foundation, so much foundation on. That woman does not go out, without, out of the house without her makeup on. And man, I swear she wears full coverage. So she met me. They took us into the office really briefly, I think. And then immediately, like after like everybody said their hellos, my big sister and her helper, who I don't remember who it was, but there's always a big sister who is like your designated program guide. And then there's like another girl there to be like her assistant to like look through all your stuff. So my big sister and her and one staff member ushered me away to the dorms and they, all my stuff was in plastic bags because my parents just, you know, chucked it in a bag and then uh, drove me down. And I was missing a lot of stuff, but they brought from home what maybe could potentially work like for church and for uniforms and whatever, whatever. So they start going through my bags. They start doing body searches. They tell me to go in this um, little changing area and have me start trying on all my outfits. Um, I had a belly button ring and I had a nose ring and I had a lip ring. I had a lot of piercings at the time. And of course they were like, do you have any piercings? And I was like, no, but I'm gonna use that light peachy shade. But obviously they knew I had piercings because like if I had my piercings in my face, you could probably put two and two together that I have other piercings on my body. So I said no, but they made me lift up my shirt and then they had me take out my um, belly button ring. And then of course, like my cartilage, everything had to come out. And um, a couple of times girls have been caught bringing in those spacers, like those clear things to keep your piercings open. Those are not allowed. They got in big, big trouble for that, by the way. Wait, I don't know why I put the peach on my eyelid because I actually wanted to do that on my eyelid, but I'll save it for the end. I will use that color. So as they're going through my stuff, they're asking me questions and writing it down on a pen pad. They're also sending stuff back. They have a big pile of stuff that I guess like doesn't fit the right way that they're giving back to my parents. And some of it is stuff that I really love. So, you know, I already feel some type of way because these people are going through all my stuff. They're making me do a fashion show. It's so embarrassing. And then they're sending my some of my stuff back. Some of my stuff that I like, I wanted. Cause you know, when you're a teenager, your stuff means a lot to you. So have having all these randos going through my stuff, just it like, kind of pissed me off. And the staff that was there, she was called Miss Kate. And um, she was the one who always busted me for the eyeliner in between my lash line and stuff. And she was uh, pretty tough on us, even though like there's, there's certain like, she has a sweet spot, but in general, she's a pretty tough cookie and pretty like strict on us as well. There was a couple staff that were less strict and a little more loving, but that was very rare. The strict ones were like the norm. So that was her. She got rid of a bunch of my stuff. It was annoying, whatever, whatever. Now we're gonna go in with that color. And that was that, that was my intake. And then they brought me to the lodge after that. They had me say goodbye to my parents and I was frustrated because my mom was crying and 
something about my mom. She does have tears for, you know, bad events. But I was so upset that she brought me there. And I was like, why are you crying? Like, I want to be crying right now. You're bringing me, like, you're saying goodbye to me, leaving me in Alabama. And I knew that the program lasted 15 months. But in my little pea brain, like, I could not compute like my little brain could not compute that I'd actually be there for 15 months. Like I thought for sure I would get out in at least six and that's being generous. Six months to a 15 year old seems like a really, really, really long time. Um, but anyway, we said our goodbyes. I don't think I even really hugged them or wanted to say my goodbyes because I was so mad at them ditching me in Alabama. Like what the heck? Like that was messed up. So we said our goodbyes and my mom's boyfriend, oh, my mom's boyfriend at the time was there, Charlie, and I hated him. He was so horrible. And um, as a teenager, I was also like, I mean, I would mess it up. Like he came into my house and started making up rules. And one day I got so frustrated. He was cornering me in my own kitchen, telling me about my attitude, my cell phone, that I threw a pepper shaker at him or salt shaker at him and just hummed it. And um, that's like, was just our relationship. I couldn't stand him. So I couldn't believe that he was in the car bringing me down there. Um, and then I had to say goodbye to him and I was like <laughs> But I don't know, I can't remember if I even acknowledged him or I, if I told him what was up because that wouldn't be uncommon for me at that age. Um, it's just a bit sassy. So now this is the LA Girl eyeliner. I've never used this, but I, I swatched it and it does seem a bit dry. Um, everything I'll link for you guys. So he was there, my mom was there, my dad was there, I said goodbye to them. And then I was very quickly assimilated into the program. So after our goodbyes, I sat in the lodge and I read through their rule book, which is very, very long. Let me grab it. This would be a good time for that. Right here. Um, I've had this. Mm, how old was I? I've had this for 13 years. Got this when I was 15. I kept it all along the way. So what you do when you're new is you read all of these rules and there's a rule book tour. I can link that for you below as well. Um, so you read all these rules with your big sister. Mine was named Alexandria. She's a super nice girl and she took good care of me. And I read through the rule book. This eyeliner sucks. Oh my God, it's terrible. This is why sometimes I'm like afraid to buy a drugstore because this $10 or six, seven, eight dollars could have gone towards like, at least like a Sephora brand kind of thing. Mm, not so good. I remember they made me a sandwich with a ton of mayo and then they were like, you missed lunch, but you can eat this sandwich. They gave me a sandwich and chips and I like didn't eat it because I don't eat mayo. And my big sister tells me, um, it's okay that you didn't eat it this time, but the next meal you have to eat all your food, okay? Uh, can you try to eat a little bit more? And I was like, no, who do you think you are? I don't eat mayo. Um, but I was in for a rude surprise because later on at dinner, there was a huge portion of food and I had to eat all of it. So after that, they brought me into the schoolhouse with her and I just cried at my desk. And then after the schoolhouse, then we like went back to the dorms. The girls were on silence until, the girls were on silence until we were back physically in the dorms, changing our clothes and stuff. There was a lot of times uh, being in the program that we would be on silence. So that means that we can't talk uh, make eye contact, ask questions, smile at each other. No form of communication is allowed. And that, that includes gestures, waving, anything like that. So we were on silence until we were in the dorms and then some of the girls talked to me, tried to get to know me a little bit because it was always interesting when somebody new came because there was not much going on there. And... For some of the girls, it meant a new friend. So then after we got changed and my sister, I whenever they did my intake, they gave me all my uniforms, which were like PE, t-shirts, sweaters in the dorm color, which was yellow. So I wore yellow for half of my stay there until they moved me dorms in which I wore green. And um, 
they gave me all the uniforms. So I changed into my uniforms, had to wear basketball shorts, a yellow shirt, felt so ugly, which is just something that you, you remember <laughs> when you're young and like vain and like you wanna be cool more than anything else. Like I really wanted to be cool at that age and I felt so uncool especially not having any of my makeup and stuff. I didn't have any makeup on because we'd driven out on overnight. And I remember girls saying, oh, you have eyeliner. I wish I had eyeliner because I just had like the remnants of old eyeliner on. And I remember thinking, you're crazy. I don't even have eyeliner on. I can't believe you think this is eyeliner. Like I should show you what I can really do. But it was really just them seeing something normal, which is like leftover smudgy eyeliner and missing that about life. So then we went to PE. I'm trying to figure everything out and I'm also trying to figure out why these girls are so excited to play basketball because they're like, oh, what do we have today? Oh, we have basketball. Yes, I love basketball. And I was just like, what the f You guys are excited about playing basketball? Um, now, of course, like after being in the program for some time, I would get excited about little things like that too because, you know, you don't get to do what you want. So when you find something enjoyable, you really relish in it because there's not much to do there. So, I, but I remember thinking it was just so weird. And I remember th like, I was not sporty. I was more like artistic. I love to take art classes. I love to kind of like stay in my shell. I was shy. And I remember thinking like, what the heck, basketball? Like, what are these girls on to? And then of course I assimilated and I love basketball. Weird. And so we're playing basketball. I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm in Alabama. Is this my real life? And everybody around me is just taking basketball so seriously. And I'll never forget it because I'm like, what is my life right now? Why am I in Alabama playing basketball? And everybody here has a Southern accent. I'm from Wisconsin. We don't have like country people there. I mean, I guess we do up North, but I was born and raised in Milwaukee. And so I was just thinking like, is this a fever dream? It was the craziest thing. I mean, I don't have the box for these, but these lashes are a dollar. They're from Cara Beauty, so I'll link these for you as well. This is a budget look. And these are my most budget-friendly lashes. So after basketball and whatever chore we had that day, it, it always went like PE and then chores or chores and then PE. We always had like two hours of like activity. At five o'clock, we had our next meal. Now, meal times for me from the beginning were very traumatic because I didn't feel comfortable with other people uh, like doing my portion of food and then making me eat it naturally. So I was always super uncomfortable from the very first meal that I was there. I was very diet conscious, not in a healthy way, but I had like um, one of those moms who like eats a banana and says that she's stuffed for six hours, like that kind of thing. Um, and there were always comments making about my weight growing up, which like kind of caused me to be super, super diet conscious. And so my first dinner there, they had something like enchiladas, I'm pretty sure. And the largest enchiladas and sides in the world were put on my plate. And this was in the beginning when we actually had quite a good cook. Her name was Debbie and she was a great cook. And then later they swapped her out for a budget cook and it was terrible food. Um, or when Debbie was gone, we ate like crap. But the food itself at my first meal, like it was good food, but the portion was so heavy and I remember counting it up and I'm like, oh my God, this is like a thousand calories on a plate. Um, and I talk a lot about how we gained weight in the program. And then sometimes people are like, well, if you only had three meals and you were hungry sometimes, then how did you gain weight? But it's because we didn't have snacks. So yeah, sometimes we were hungry. Like when the times, like when mealtime came around, we were starving because we had people feeding us only three times a day with a, no snacks or anything. And so then we did have like really big meals when we were having them, but then there would be like no food for a period. So I think it also like made my food anxiety worse because I couldn't control what I was eating, how much I was eating, 
and um, when I was eating. So it's not a huge deal, but it did cause some food issues. We were lucky though, because at Lakeland Academy, which is our sister school, it's under the same umbrella. These are teen challenge programs for youth. Lakeland was a teen challenge program for youth, but each one is dealt with a little bit differently. And at their school, they got starved. They got put on oatmeal restriction where they would only get packets of oatmeal three times a day. And a packet of oatmeal is like 120 calories. Three of those packets is 360 calories. So that is way less than any teenage girl needs. So, so I, although I had some weird experiences with the food at the school I went to, there is always much worse stories out there. Like I follow a lot of the girls on social media who went to Lakeland or to Trinity and oh my gosh, I cannot believe how bad their stories are. So anyway, so that was my first meal. I don't remember anything else. I don't remember anything else until I woke up the next morning and I was dreaming that I was home and then the alarm goes off at 6 a.m. Every day we got up at 6 and we went to bed at 10. And when you were in bed, you could not get up unless it was to go pee and it had to be after 10.30. So you couldn't like go to the bathroom immediately. Sometimes you have to go and it'd be like 10, 15 and you just stare at the clock and then you'd go. So, um, so we went to bed at 10, woke up at six and I woke up and I couldn't remember that I was there. Like I forgot. And oh my God, that's really when I felt like the most fear and sadness because I realized like this is real I'm here I stayed my first night I don't know when I'm gonna come out oh the dread that I felt that day I don't know like of course like with the loss of my sister I'm sure I felt like more but that dread that I felt at that point, that was really, really scary for me. I'm just taking my crease piece and I just wanted to go in with like a little bit more creasy action. I don't know if you've ever seen this and I'm using it wrong. There's actually an insert that goes over it. Um, but this I learned about on TikTok and it's so cool. It was my first day in the program it was scary. Um, I felt like so many emotions because I didn't know anyone around me. And at 15, I was definitely like an older 15. Like I had done things that a lot of 15 year olds shouldn't do. You know, I wasn't an innocent 15 year old by any means, but I have a cousin who's 15 and being around her makes it very clear to me how wrong it was that I was placed there because she is very young and it is very apparent. Um, and I just can't imagine her being in a place like that. I think it's so cruel. So that's that story. What else can I tell you? I have this e.l.f. eye glitter that I'm going to pop on the lid. Drugstore shadow, like, okay, this is why I love, like, prestige makeup brands because the shimmers are popping. And these, they're, I mean, I believe that there can be, but, like, Danessa Mirix and Pat McGrath, man, there's nothing like it. And because I have to have it for work, I have no trouble in like indulging in that and I get a professional discount. So that's also why I don't have a lot of drugstore makeup because sometimes by the time I get 40% off, the uh, nice makeup is at a discount or I get gifted things, stuff like that. So like I often don't spend money on um, drugstore makeup because I kind of have an in in the makeup thing and I can get the good makeup. And in the past, uh, when I used to have no money and loved makeup, 
I would buy things like NYX concealer and then I would go through it and then one day I would I was rebuying my NYX concealer. I'm going to use this. This is $20. I, um, I was buying my NYX concealer. Oh, I forgot to use this. I got the Halo thing, the e.l.f. thing. Now, if this is good, I'm gonna uh, put a little bit uh, of it in a container and use it in my makeup kit. So I'm gonna put it on a palette so that I don't um, mess it up because I think I'm gonna like this. So I'm not gonna put it right on my face. I'm gonna keep it sanitary so that I can maybe use this because I ran out of the light Charlotte Tilbury one. Anyway, so I looked at how much was actually in the e.l.f. concealer and then I was like, oh my God, all this time I could have had like at the time a Tarte concealer that would have lasted all this time and maybe been a little bit better. So sometimes I'd like do the math, like if this concealer is this big and cost this much, then why don't I just get the $26 one instead of the $13 one because there's three times amount of product, blah, blah, blah. So, so then at that point, I started like saving my coins for one thing, like one more expensive thing instead of um, like having a bunch of drugstore makeup. But also like, I understand that I'm in the industry and I have certain perks to my makeup situation than most people have. So don't worry, I do get that. And I'm actually quite enjoying this. This is fun to try new things. Let's take a look at this. This e.l.f. one, uh, it is. it really is just like the Charlotte. It's actually a little bit more pearly, which I like. The texture is very similar. Okay, so let's also talk about things that my big sister on my first day were like, don't do and say that. First we'll spray, because this is noisy. This is one of my favorite foundations, and Sephora is not a drugstore, but it cost $20, and today I was looking at some of the foundations, and they got up to 20 and 30, so I was like, I'll just use my Sephora one. I don't need to buy makeup and waste it, you know? Uh, and everything here, I'm gonna try to use, because that's another thing. I don't like buying things and wasting them, and I don't do returns, because I feel too bad. Okay, so one of the first things that my big sister told me, and she was like, Never say run away. You're not allowed to say it. You're not allowed to talk about it. It doesn't matter if you're kidding. Never, ever, ever say it or else you'll get months added. If you talk about running away, you get, wait, I can't remember, but I'll find it in the rule book. If you talk about running away, talking about running away, regardless of intent, will result in two months added to the program. Running away will result in starting the program over. Students enrolled less than a month will have two months added to the program. So there it is. So that was something that she told me and I was like, when she was telling me all these rules, I, th I thought a lot of them were more figurative or that like surely I could make a joke about that and I wouldn't get time added. Um, but she really drove home, no, you cannot say that. And anytime um, that I was like under her care for my first however many weeks, she would be like really serious, like you cannot say that, you cannot do that. And at the time I was like, she is such a narc. Uh, but little did I know, she was trying to save my ASS. She was trying to keep it so that I don't get in trouble because as soon as your off sister, which, it's either in two weeks or four weeks. I can't remember. I think it might be four, but whenever you're off sister, you're on your own and that's when you can start getting disciplines. So my first discipline was right as soon as I got off sister, when I left the infamous sock on the floor, I tell this story. I left a sock on the floor at lineup. They had us line up like we were in the military, uh, line up on silence in the hallway. And I left a sock on the floor and all of your stuff has to be really tidy. Your bed has to be made perfectly. Your stuff has to be in a certain arrangement and they check every morning and every time at lineup. So it was a big deal. And because my sock was on the floor, I got a one hour discipline. And I was so mad because the woman who gave it to me, I couldn't 
oh, I couldn't stand her. She was not nice. She was a church kid and kind of like an outcast from the rest of the world. Um, and she just, you could just tell that she just been born and raised in the church. And she also, you could tell that she really enjoyed having a little bit of authority over other people because she probably was never, never able to tell anybody what to do besides telling us what to do every single day. So I couldn't stand her. She was always getting me in trouble and I had good intentions. I was trying to follow the rules because I was scared of having to stay longer, getting in trouble, losing my privileges, losing my first phone call. I was scared of losing that stuff. And by the time that you do talk to your parents, it's been four weeks. It, it's two weeks until you get mail and four weeks until you can talk to your parents on the phone. So by the time that time comes around, you're just like, oh my God, I gotta get on the, on the phone with them and be really nice and maybe they'll think about taking me back. And also, we were not allowed to ask to go home. I think I've made this clear in the shorts, but we could not ask to leave. And if we did, they would say we're being negative and cut the phone line. There was one girl who, she never explicitly asked to go home, but she would always act sad on her calls because she was sad to be there and she would always cry. And they eventually took away a couple of her calls just for being that upset um, in front of her family. So we had to really play it cool. Like we couldn't be like so outwardly like wanting to go home. And also then, as you, as you stay there longer, you start to think in your head because they always tell you like, God wants you here and leaving here is leaving the umbrella of God's protection. And when you leave the umbrella of God's protection, you can die. They said that all the time. And my daughter at 15, this is the putty bronzer. I've never tried this. I'm kind of excited um, from ELF. I thought that was real. I was like, oh my God, I don't want to die because my parents have been telling me my whole life that I was going to die. Well, like they've been inferring it, like die to go to hell, die and go to hell, get left behind. Like all of those thoughts were already in my head. And to me, it was a very real reality that these things could happen because these are things that have been told to me by other adults my whole life. I believed it. Um, so yeah, it became very scary to be surrounded by that ideology all the time because I had always been very afraid of that ideology, even though like that was my entire upbringing. Like there was no like friendliness that I had about it. There was no like positivity that I had about it. I was just afraid of it. As soon as I was in the program, I was willing to like adopt to it because I was like, I'm so far away from my friends who would think this is uncool. They're not here. Nobody's here to save me. And it might be true that I could be sent to hell or get left behind or whatever. The pastor at this church is saying that the end is coming in like before the new year. So to me, I was like, okay, I guess I'm adopting this now and this is gonna be a part of me. So they got me, they got me all turned over and changed and afraid and submissive, like within six weeks. Within six weeks, I was very docile. Wow, I love that putty bronzer, it's $7. You guys were right about the drugstore. Looks so good. This is Rose Romantique. I've shown this before, I really quite like this blush. I like it because it like mats me out too. I like my blush to be matte. I just, shimmer and blush is just something that I don't stand for. I don't really like it. Uh, I also have like oily combo skin, so I like to like carefully place my shimmer. And I love a dewy look, but like no sparkle ever. Like highlight, powder highlight, it's hard for me to wear that out of the house. Like I'll wear it for a makeup video and I put on my clients because it looks pretty on them, but some of us don't look pretty in powder highlight unless we're having a good skin day. And oh, I have the butter bronzer from Physicians Formula and I'm gonna tell you right now, I've had this a long time. I bought it because the internet told me to and I don't like it. 
but I'm gonna use it today because it's all I have that's from the drugstore bronzer wise besides that putty bronzer and I want it to kind of be set by bronzer. I don't like it because it straight up wipes off my face like it gets streaky throughout the day. I get oily and I like bronzers to stay where I put them. Many bronzers do. The Too Faced one stays where I put it. This one, if I start to get oily and like God forbid something touches my face, like even just like a sweater, it will wipe right off. So I don't like this bronzer. I liked it in my past life. Actually, I used Physician's Formula Baked Bronzer when I was in the program. And people often ask like what we were allowed to have for makeup. We were allowed one mascara, one blush, one foundation, one um, highlight didn't exist back then. This was in 2009 to 2012. One lip gloss one lipstick but no color so it had to be like pink like like a tint of color like no real colorful things so i would use colossal mascara covergirl foundation physician's formula baked bronzer did i say yeah mascara yeah and that was my oh concealer on the lip lip injection gloss we were allowed one gloss, and that was my makeup routine there. I got the Makeup Revolution powder. This reminded me of the Ben Nye one, so I hope it's as good. This was like one of the only loose powders I could find. I hope that this powder is good, but honestly, nothing can be uh, worse than the powder that I've been using. No shade, but I've been using the Dragon Beauty powder because I can't find my Givenchy one, and it is not good. It leaves me looking so bad. This powder is nice too. Wow, I'm shook. This powder is great. So far, everything's great except for that eyeliner. So we'll do lips and then kind of wrap it up. This is my favorite lipstick and it happens to be drugstore. It's CoverGirl 230 Cream. This is the best lipstick. Look how much I've used. It's a nub, I gotta get a new one. I love this lipstick. It's kind of like the Sephora Lacquer Ink, the Sephora brand, which I also love. But this is just like something softer about it. And also my lips are really dry. So I hope you can't see how dry they are. Let's do a little more bronzer and blush and then we'll call it a day. Um, allegedly, my boyfriend is coming over I turn my phone on night night mode because it's synced to my camera and I can't be having him like ruin the YouTube party. But allegedly last I heard he was gonna come over um, and again, he is the original person who got me sick. So he really quite owes me a visit and yesterday was a hard day for me because yesterday was supposed to be my sister's birthday. I posted a short about it. It would have been Hannah's 31st. So I've been in a terrible mood um which the wine is helping and I had therapy this morning and I was like dying in it uh because I don't often like feel my feelings uh because I find it to be really exhausting and really disruptive to my life so yesterday on my sister's would-be birthday I held in all my feelings for today when I saw my therapist and then I let it all out um and I sometimes literally I think about my therapist and I'm like that's not really fair that she should have to take on all that and then I'm like oh but I'm paying her to do so so yes yeah, she should but like thank you for doing it because she doesn't have to do it so that helped a lot of just getting it out so that I can be well because all I really want in life is to be well and to also 
just kind of flit around. Like I don't want to have to be anywhere. So every year that goes by, I hope to become a little bit more independent. I hate going places that I don't want to be at. I to be more positive actually. This is the final look. So I actually really quite like this makeup look, you guys. This is my first full face of drugstore makeup on my channel, I think, ever. I'm really satisfied. And like, I'm, I'm really trying to like, to like find fault and really everything looks as good as my expensive products. A couple of drawbacks are obviously the eyeliner. If you guys know of a drugstore liner that you love, can you let me know what it is? And I'll buy that instead. I actually love the Sephora brand one but I didn't have time to go to Sephora just for one Sephora brand eyeliner. So anyone that's at like Target or something, let me know and I'll try that one instead. Um, the other drawback is the shadows are less pigmented than like expensive palettes. For the cost, it's totally fair because I think this must be under $20. So fair enough that it's not the best thing that's ever hit my eyes. It does work. And honestly, the effect of it, I noticed kind of like the little subtle differences, but somebody who wasn't very makeup savvy would not know that I have a face full of drugstore makeup. So I feel like the complexion is banging, lip combo banging, the eyes leave a little bit to be desired, but besides that, like, I'm really quite satisfied, so I hope you are too. <sighs> Thank you for being here. Uh, it's a lot to watch a long video. I appreciate you for being here with me, and hopefully I'll be better at um, these kind of like chit chats. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep it going like once a week. I could try because I really enjoy these too. So thank you for being here. I appreciate you watching. I'll link all the products and uh, I'll try to put the brushes that I use too. I use a lot of Moda brushes and they're pretty affordable, though sometimes some of them fall apart, but some of them don't. So I'll just link the good ones. Okay, thank you again for being here. I love you dearly and I'll see you for the next one.